It's fitting that we're here at the Science Museum. Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, Einstein, of course, some of the finest minds ever to have lived. They were all made by dyslexia. My name is Robin Curdo. I am a CNN anchor and correspondent. I'm also made by dyslexia. I'm very pleased to be here at the Made by Dyslexia Global Summit to celebrate dyslexia and make sure that people don't see it as a negative but as the positive that it is. I brought my son Bay with me. It's amazing to see all these amazing people, but they were dyslexic, which I didn't actually know. So it's great to be dyslexic now. My work is a true testimony of what dyslexic people are capable of doing. I create the smallest sculptures in the world. A lot of people in society see dyslexic people as being invisible, meaning they don't matter. But they've got it wrong, they made a mistake. When you see CEOs of Facebook and the head of GCHQ and a government minister and a princess announcing that they are dyslexic and, and actually it is a real advantage, I think it's incredibly inspiring. Dyslexia is the single biggest driver of ingenuity, imagination and scientific achievement in human history. They do have great imaginations. When I realised that typical schoolwork you know, wasn't for me, um, I started dreaming. The things that Virgin Galactic are doing, I think many more of us will get our dream coming true. I think it is very much part of the human psyche to look up and wonder, have a crazy dream. I've had a crazy dream and it's taken me to places I would have never believed. I mean, sitting here in front of you with a very large Richard Branson behind me, <laughs> I would have never believed as a child that this was possible. There are so many benefits of being dyslexic, but what we need to do is sort of a coach our kids so that they can go through the minefield that is the education system as it stands at the moment, or even better, change the education system. I'm delighted that Gibraltar has been the first nation to sign up to the Made by Dyslexia pledge to ensure that we support those with dyslexia in our schools and the new world of work. I throw down the gauntlet to every other nation in the world. The Virgin Group has just decided we will not ask anybody for their exam results ever again. And I think if every company didn't ask for exam results, then schools would have to be different. We do have to look at things differently if we're going to combat some of the challenges that every young person is facing for the 21st century. So, you know, the time is now. The most important message this year is, uh, comes from the EY report. What it says is that dyslexic skills are needed for future jobs and a lot of the dyslexic weaknesses are being replaced by technology. The skills that are going to be there in 2030, the, you know, the, the kindergartners and first graders of today, are things like creativity and social learning uh, and collaboration and self-awareness. And those are all the, the really valuable skills that dyslexics just are rock stars at. We have a hundred years of keeping the country safe. With the right mix of minds, anything is possible. And dyslexics are definitely part of those mix of minds. They can recognise the skills of others, they can find a narrative way through, and they can be open to bring in the experts when they need it. We hire over 45,000 people a year in HSBC. It's far less about whether you've got a certain number of A-levels or what your degree was, it's about whether you can bring those skills. I thought tonight was amazing. It was a wonderful opportunity to remind ourselves of what we know about dyslexia, the difference that we can make, really inspire and celebrate what makes dyslexic thinking so amazing, but also a sobering reminder that there's a lot that needs to be done. To actually test a dyslexic child and grade them on their spelling, punctuation and grammar is quite honestly cruel. I mean, we just are not good at that. Anybody listening from government this government particularly, because we have all these exam changed, has to listen to that message. We pick up a lot of young people through the Prince's Trust who deem themselves as failures, think they've failed at everything, but mostly the only thing they need is some support and self-belief. We are dismantling brick by brick the things that are most important to teach resilience. So if we take away sport, art, music, if we take away drama, that is often where those core skills are taught. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing. 
Most teachers aren't trained, so most dyslexic children aren't being identified. They're not being given the support that they need and they're not being taught in the way that they need to learn. And we're working very hard with Microsoft right now on the teacher training part of it. The teaching profession is our first line of defence. I am so lucky to be working with Made by Dyslexia to really champion the way that we should be looking after our teachers to make sure that they have the um, skills as well. We'll be supporting Made by Dyslexia's new campaign, Connecting the Dots, a global movement to level the playing field so every dyslexic child can achieve their potential. It's about bringing together all the brilliant charities out there that are doing fantastic work, all of the parents that are campaigning for their kids, all of the brilliant organisations who are trying to push dyslexia forward. It's time, let's leave this room and really start fighting, because those kids are worth it. We can't have enough groups like this around the world because that's where it's really going to make a difference. We are the game changers. If tonight doesn't make governments around the world realise that they need to see the value in dyslexia and they need to make change, then I honestly don't know what will.